My, I'm Dr. Elma Sri. I'm a consultant cardiothoracic anaesthetist and intensivist at Newcross Hospital in Wolverhampton. And I'm here to share our experience with point of care testing at our centre. Just a bit of background to our unit. We've been around for 16 years. There are six cardiothoracic surgeons and seven anaesthetists intensivists. We do on average 800 to 1,000 cases a year. The type of cases include uh, coronary artery bypass grafting mainly, aortic valve repair replacements, mitral surgery, aortic surgery, and so on. We do not do ECMO. We do not do transplants. Our, our critical care is integrated with general intensive care. So our case numbers were, of course, affected by COVID, as you can see. So what is our approach to bleeding management? Well, bleeding is multifactorial and with cardiac patients, preoperative antiplatelet medication is a massive contributory factor. But also the type and duration of surgery is key. But most importantly for us, it's surgical anxiety. If there is no visible clot, the surgeon wants the platelets and they want all the products and they want any product immediately. And that is why point of care testing and formal laboratory tests are very useful because they help guide which product to give and when. We use tranexamic acid routinely. For the high risk cases, we use a proton, so that would be for the dissections, infective endocarditis, and redo surgery. So in 2019, our TEG 5000 was coming to the end of its life and discussions ensued between the perfusionists, the anaesthetists and the cardiac surgeons. There were three main issues with our point of care testing. There was a very high error rate, particularly out of hours. So 75% of tests ran out of hours were erroneous and that was expensive. On top of that, a test would be run but the surgeons would just order products regardless. So why have a point of care test, it, test system if we're not going to follow it? And then of course there was ongoing discussion about platelet function and platelet quantity and whether we wanted a platelet mapping system rather than a point of care test. And so we started looking at alternatives and we trialed the Quantra from 2019. So we've been using it Formally, since July 2021, there was a bit of a delay, partly due to COVID and partly due to the pathology software system. But once that was resolved, it meant other departments, such as obstetrics, were able to um, implement their um, point of care testing a lot quicker than us. What did we notice? Well, there was certainly significantly less user error because there is no pipetting involved. It also, we were also getting results, I think, faster, or it certainly felt faster. What coincided with our use of Quantra was our, is, the, is that we obtained um, fibrinogen concentrate and that was available in theatre. And it meant that we were, with the fibrinogen contribution to clot stiffness, it meant that we were replacing fibrinogen a lot earlier. With a new point of care system, of course you need we need a new algorithm. And this is the current algorithm that we use in our unit. So it's based on the clot initiation. And if there is residual heparin, we would give additional protamine. Or if it was not related to heparin, we would give a PCC or fresh frozen plasma. Platelet contribution, obviously, if there was a reduced platelet contribution count, we would give platelets and, of course, the fibrinogen contribution. So I'm just going to go through a number of cases to illustrate the way we use point of care testing at our unit. So this is case one. This patient presented with ST segments myocardial infarction. It was for a cabbage times three. Uh, clopidogrel and aspirin were stopped a week prior to surgery. The bypass time in this case was 76 minutes. The patient received a tranexamic infusion. And once we came off bypass, we gave protamine. And after the 10 minutes after the administration of protein, 
We did a full blood count for the platelet count, a coagulation screen for the INR, the APTR, and the fibrinogen level, and a Quantra. We had a Quantra result in 13 minutes. And as you can see from this Quantra result, the clot stiffness is at the lower end of normal, and it's due to the platelet's contribution to clot stiffness. The patient, uh, the, sorry, the surgeon was satisfied with hemostasis. We didn't give any products in theatre. And when we handed over the patient to intensive care, we advised them of the Quantra result and suggested that if the patient was to bleed, to consider giving platelets first. We got the full blood count and coagulation screen in 100 minutes later. So it takes, our, it takes us a while to get our formal lab results, and that's why point-of-care testing makes a huge difference for us. And as you can see, the INR and the APTR were 1.3, and the platelet count was 140, and the fibrinogen was less than 2. The patient was extubated two hours after arrival into intensive care. The patient bled and was given platelets based on the quantum reading and fibrinogen based on the lab result of the fibrinogen being less than two. The patient, however, continued to bleed and we took the patient back to theatre later on and it was surgical bleeding from the mammary bed. Case two, this patient was uh, redo, yes, redo cardiac surgery, triple valve, mitral aortic and tricuspid valve repair replacement. The bypass time was 150 minutes. The patient received a proteinin infusion, a full dose protocol. And after we came off bypass, 10 minutes after the administration of proteinin, we sent off the full blood count, the coagulation screen, and the Quantra. We had a full Quantra result in 14 minutes. We had a full blood count and coagulation report in 86 minutes. As you can see from this Quantra, the clot time um, was prolonged. The clot time ratio is normal. And so the, based on our protocol, we would be advised to give a uh, prothrombin complex concentrate or fresh frozen plasma if the patient was bleeding. The surgeon was anxious, so we gave prothrombin complex concentrate in theater. We took the patient back to intensive care and there was no further bleeding, and the patient was extubated several hours later. The blood, as I said, the full blood count and coagulation screen came back 86 minutes later, and those were the results. And as you can see, the APTR 2.9 and INR 1.6, they that count of less than 100 and a reasonable fibrinogen level. Case three. This patient had infective endocarditis. It was for a mitral valve repair. The patient received an aproteinin infusion. Red cell transfusion was required on pump, and additional heparin was required on pump. When we came off bypass, proteinin was administered, and we took a full blood count, a coagulation screen, and a Quantra 10 minutes later. We had a full Quantra result in 11 minutes. The surgeon was satisfied with hemostasis and we did not give any products in theater. As you can see from the Quantra, the clot strength or the clot stiffness, sorry, is low. And this was related to the platelet contribution to clot stiffness. The clot time is uh, raised, but the clot time ratio is um, normal. We didn't give any products in theater. We took the patient back to intensive care the patient, we handed over the Quantra results and suggested if the patient, if the patient was to bleed, to give um, additional platelets based on the Quantra. The patient bled 200 mils in the first hour, so we did administer, they did administer platelets. They also did give additional protamine. I think that was based on the lab result. The patient again bled another 100 mils every hour and fibrinogen concentrate was given. And I think it was also based on the Quantra because it was at the lower end of normal. We got the full blood count and coagulation screen again over an hour after the case, after, sorry, the, the samples were sent. And here we have a raised, a slightly raised INR, um, a reasonable platelet count and a fibrinogen of 2.1. 
So I'm sure you can appreciate the time taken for a point of care test compared to getting a formal laboratory result in our unit. It allows us to target the type of product that we give and when we would give it. Certainly our user error rate is significantly less since we've um, up to using, started using the Quantra. And we certainly give fibrinogen significantly earlier than we used to before we had the Quantra. Thank you very much for your attention.